In this video, I will provide you with some framing ideas for building a garage that you can drive through. And we are going to start by taking a quick view of the framed building. And then we are going to take it apart piece by piece until we get to the holes dug in the soil for the footings. And we have two by six rafters, 24 inches on center, and two by four walls on the outside here, two by six on these sides here. And I'm doing that to provide me with a little more strength. And for those of you who are not familiar with my channel, this is not meant to provide you with structural engineering information. And you might need to contact a structural engineer in your area or local building authorities before building something like this. So let's go ahead and start with our two rows of rebar. And our footings are going to be 16 inches wide, 18 inches deep. And the reason why I'm doing that is because you might need a little more strength for all of the hold downs and you might even need to install additional rebar and larger anchor bolts or even space your anchor bolts a little closer on center. So here we're using number five rebar, two layers of it. And even though I did not put it in the video, you might actually need a couple of more rows of rebar and some stirrups to create some type of a bond beam on each side underneath the garage door openings. Let's go ahead and take a look at our anchor bolt placement, 32 inches on center with some large hold downs here. And please don't ask me for specific sizes. Again, these are only meant to be used as examples. If I suggest that this is an HD 10 or an HD 14 or an HD 40 and you somehow think that that's what you need for your particular garage then I'm here to tell you that you might not need as large of hold downs you might not need large anchor bolts and you might not need wide footings and they might not need to be as deep either again it's going to depend upon the area you live and here are a couple of hold downs that we're going to have located in our window and if you notice they are shaped shaped a little different. They are shaped exactly like the anchor bolts. However, on the larger hold downs, they might be shaped a little differently because the engineer is going to want them to stick in the concrete a little longer. If, for example, there's an earthquake in your area, go ahead and fill all that up with concrete and then install the garage floor slab and it is going to be sloping in one direction. However, you could always start in the center and then slope it in either direction. And for those of you who might have a difficult time seeing what I'm talking about, we're going to have a larger area here on the stem wall. For example, we might have six inches here and since the top of the stem wall is going to be level, then the section on the other side is going to be a little smaller. And most garage floors slope between an eighth of an inch and a quarter of an inch per foot. And hopefully the individual who caught this mistake in another video is okay with the way I suggested it in this video. Because in the other video I made a mistake suggesting that the slope of the entire distance might only be about a quarter of an inch. And by the way, if you find any mistakes in my videos, feel free to let me know in the comment area or email them to me. Next up, let's go ahead and install our wall framing. This wall here will have 16 inch on center stud spacing and will be a two by four wall. However, this wall here is going to be a two by six wall so that we can put some four by six posts in here to provide us with a little more structural strength. And of course, our heavy duty hold downs. And there's a good chance that your engineer is going to want a three by plate on here. Something that's going to be two and a half inches thick instead of an inch and a half thick. And if that's the case, don't forget to adjust your framing studs. And that might be as simple as cutting one inch off of them. And I wouldn't countersink these bolts here or drill holes to where they can sink into the post a little bit without contacting your engineer, of course. 
And the reason for all of this structural reinforcement is because we do not have enough lateral strength in this wall because our garage door opening is so large. And since we have a 20 foot wide garage in this direction and a 26 foot length in this direction, if you were going to make the garage a little wider, then it might not require as much structural reinforcement in that area. Next up, let's go ahead and take a look at the hold downs in the window framing. And the bolts that hold everything together might only need to drill through two of these studs. And your engineer will love this if you can actually do it. And that's the fact that I have placed a four foot wide window perfectly to where the shear panel will meet at the trimmers or the framing studs. And again, this isn't something you have to do. It's just something I did in the video to provide you with something else you can do, along with shaping the top of the shear panel instead of leaving it flat. And I will provide you with a reason why I did that here in a few minutes. Next up, let's go ahead and take a look at something else I did. And that was to install another piece of shear panel on the inside here. And this is another thing that your engineer might or might not have you do. And we're going to be installing the shear panel before we install the framed wall that will be attaching to it so that we can nail the perimeter around the entire paneling along with notching for the top of the other framing plate so that we can get a nice structural connection between the plates here and that might look something like this. So you can see here where we have reduced the length of this top plate or the lower top plate and the bottom top plate so that the shear panel can fit between the wall framing stud and the post. And these are usually details that the structural engineer isn't going to have on your plans. However, I like to do it again because it's providing me with a better structural connection. And you can see here where this piece of paneling ties from the framing stud to the post. And then this piece ties from post to post. And let's go ahead and remove the panel to give you a better idea of what we're doing. And another thing you can do is have this piece right here go four feet and then install your two foot piece. And even though I can't explain the reason why, it just seems like it would be stronger if we had a larger piece here and a smaller piece here or even a smaller piece over here. And another thing I need to point out is that if you do install this piece of shear panel, you will not be installing this piece of shear panel until the inspector has inspected all of the hold downs and building hardware. It's the last thing you want to do is nail that piece of shear panel on and then have to take it off. So if you are going to be installing two pieces of shear panel, just make sure that you don't install both of them until the building inspector has gave their approval. Next up, let's go ahead and install the 2x6 roof rafters, spaced 24 inches on center. And even though this might work in some areas, if you're dealing with snow loads, then you might need to space the rafters closer together, maybe 16 inches on center, and use larger rafters. And of course, we will have our notches for our lookouts, our blocking, and a brace at each side. And this brace will usually work two ways. It will prevent the ridge from moving and then after you have installed the roof sheathing it will prevent the wall from moving also and those braces can be made out of two by fours and nailed with 16 D nails to the ridge and then toenailed to the top plate and then of course nailed to the gable studs if you're going to have them there which of course we are going to have gable studs there and of course the rafter seat cut will extend past the shear panel another method that you might use on your project along with our blocks and of course our rafter ties we cannot forget them spaced 48 inches on center or every other rafter on a two foot on center rafter spacing and we have our collar ties here now here's something i did a little different and even though i've never seen it done before it seems like a good idea and that would be to hang your rafter ties off of the collar ties and again don't shoot the messenger if for whatever reason these braces need to connect to the ridge because your engineer doesn't like my new idea, then I understand. Next up, we will install our outlookers, fascia board, and gable studs. And you can see here where this gable stud is right next to the brace so we can nail the brace 
to the gable stud and our gable studs will be 2 by 4s spaced 16 inches on center and our roof pitch here is a 4 and 12 roof pitch and after we have installed our gable studs we can install our shear panel and we will be notching the shear panel around the lookouts however that might not be necessary just as long as it's firmly attached to the roof rafter because this is where we're going to get another nice structural connection because we're going to have the shear panel tying some of the wall framing to the roof because after we install our roof sheathing we're going to be able to nail this rafter here and if this is part of the perimeter nailing for the sheathing then you might need to space the nails a little closer and that information should be on your building plans and of course you can see why we shaped the top of the shear panel so that we could use the shear panel to connect the roof rafter to the wall framing where we won't be able to do that on the other side without installing another piece of shear panel and of course having a weak connecting point here and of course for those of you who would like me to keep going because you can't get enough of these videos don't worry because I will be making more of them unless something happens to me and as always if you have any questions about this feel free to leave them in the comment area and I will answer them as soon as possible